Hello guys, welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. I just posted on Facebook that I am totally torn as to which of these boxes I want to open today. One of them contains a PCI card. I'm not going to tell you what type of PCI card because I don't want to spoil it, but this is going to require quite a bit of testing and I'm not sure if I feel up to the challenge today. This on the other hand is going to be a little bit easier to take a look at. It's something that's been out on the market for quite a while uh, and I bought it used off eBay. Of course you guys already know what it is because it's in the title if I decide to unbox this one, which I think I'm going to. So this is the Raspberry Pi Model B, not the B+, this is the good old B. And the reason I got this is because the Pi Top Seed is now shipping with the Raspberry Pi 3, and I'm going to get that next month. I am totally excited about that, and I really want to try out one of the previous versions of the Raspberry Pi before I got my hands on the Pi 3. This was the cheapest thing I could find on eBay. For some reason, everyone selling used ones at like, you know, retail price. It's absolutely ridiculous. I got this one for 11 bucks plus $4 shipping. Uh, still kind of expensive because you you guys know I pull off computers uh, from garage sales for like five bucks for a Core 2 Duo machine. Uh, so, you know, to me, this is kind of pricey, but still, uh, this was the most reasonably priced unit I could find. So what we're going to be doing today is unboxing the Raspberry Pi Model B. I'm gonna throw this off to the side and save this for later. And let's go ahead and open up the package from eBay because hey, I'm curious to see if it even came in one piece or if I even got the Raspberry Pi Model B. Who knows with eBay? So let's go ahead and check it out, guys. You know I love giving you guys the full unboxing experience. So the mic is right above the package. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this thing open. I'm probably gonna have to speed up the footage because this is uh, pretty uh, taped down. It's gonna take a little bit to get it open. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too hard. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And I keep saying, let's go ahead. I'll try to use a different phrase this time. All right, we got a little receipt right here. That looks good. As you can see, I'm not sure how in focus that is, but I paid a total of $15 for this, including shipping. Pretty good job. He put some air packs in here. Now these look like the ones you can get from, uh, you know, the Amazon, that ship with Amazon Prime. <laughs> they probably are the ones that ship with Amazon Prime. There we go. Okay, so that looks good. He put in a nice uh, anti-static bubble wrap wrap. So far, so good. Is there anything else in there? No, the package is empty. So let's push this off to the side and open you up. There we go. Everything looks good. The case is a little uh, loose, it seems. He's probably used it quite a bit, but that's not too big of a deal. Um, as you can see, there is a 8 gigabyte SD card. Uh, I think he said this has noobs on it. Um, so we'll play around with that in a couple minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and change the focus so you guys can get a closer look at this. I took a couple seconds to look over the Pi and everything looks like it is in pristine condition. Of course, I still have to plug it in, turn it on and make sure it actually works. But so far, so good. I brought it closer to the camera and changed the focus so you guys could get a better look at everything. So I'm just going to rotate it around and walk you guys around this. I'm not going to stay on it too long because as I said, this has been out on the market for a while and pretty much everyone knows about the uh, Raspberry Pi, especially this model, the Model B, because it's just so old and been around for such a long time. Now, but you can see our composite right here. Uh, 3.5 millimeter audio input, two USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI in, and then the source for our power. You can see the uh, SD card sticking out right here. This is a eight gigabyte class four. Is that Kingston? Yeah, it's a Kingston SD card. And this case is actually pretty nice. It has all the cutouts you would need to gain access to the IO ports. Cut out right here, 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 here. Of course you guys can see it. So I really don't need to point them all out. Just going crazy with that. And then on the back, there's some cutouts to allow airflow into the case. I think that's really about it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a power source, plug this thing in, and hopefully it actually works. I did my best to reduce the glare on the screen, but as you can see, I wasn't really that successful. There's still a significant amount of glare there, and I also migrated off my other microphones. I'm just using the built-in microphone right now. So I apologize for that, guys, but I have the Raspberry Pi right here, and I'm gonna power it on right now. All right, so as you can see, everything works. I'm definitely gonna have to throw in a faster SD card uh, because it is installing the operating system and it looks like it is going to take forever. So that class four just isn't going to cut it. But you can see uh, we are installing Debian 
and the uh, Raspberry Pi is right here chugging away. So everything is going great right now. I'll update you guys in a couple minutes after the operating system has finished installing. There we go, we are booting up into Raspbian and I uh, suspect that this will take quite a while since it is the first boot. So I'm gonna cut the clip again and come back when it gets to the desktop. I've been playing around with the Pi for probably about 30 minutes now and so far I really like it despite its age, it's still pretty snappy. Uh, after the first boot, it now boots up in under a minute with the Raspbian operating system and for the most part applications are pretty responsive considering how old this thing is. So I'm gonna move over here, we'll just go and open up, oh where to go, where are our office programs though? There we go, we're open up an instance of LibreOffice. Um, I did have one issue, for some reason the USB port on the back of my TV just decided to crap out and I had to break out a USB power bank so it's now running off that USB power bank to the right right there. Uh, but besides that everything has been great. Whoa, I just lost you guys. The uh, camera decided to uh, take a little dive there but you are back and LibreOffice is still opening. Uh, this is a little slower than last time. Last time it opened up in probably about 10 seconds. This time uh, it's taking a little bit longer for some reason, but eh, not too big of a deal. I'm gonna open it up right here and let's just try typing in our favorite phrase. Hello YouTube. There we go, so I can start manipulating the text now, just make it slightly larger. How about we make that bold and how about I change the color to a nice dark red. So that's all great. Gonna close out of this. Let's just hit the web for a couple seconds. I did uh, throw in a wireless dongle and connect to my Wi-Fi network and that has been working pretty good. I didn't expect it to go that smooth but it went really smooth. All I had to do was uh, throw in the uh, Wi-Fi dongle and bam it detected my network so I was expecting a challenge but it wasn't really a challenge and that is a good thing so I'm gonna visit my website I'm gonna watch it load up and when it comes to web browsing it is a bit sluggish um, and that is to be expected uh, don't really have any issues with it but yeah it is a bit slow as you guys can see it does eventually get the job done though there we go my website starting to load up ta-da and we'll just scroll down oh it's still loading there we go and you can see this the scrolling isn't you know super smooth uh, but you can navigate the page everything's working out pretty well so I'm not complaining. Guys, that was all fine and dandy, but let's take it to the next level. Let's overclock this bad boy. Let's see if we can get it up to one gigahertz. I realized that there was BlueJ on this operating system and I opened it up to try to program some Java because I programmed uh, with BlueJ a lot in high school. It was our primary Java ID and I preferred Eclipse over it but for some reason they wanted us to use BlueJ and oh there's a big story about that. Uh, but I got into BlueJ and then I realized I don't really remember that much Java from high school. I was just trying to print something out and I couldn't so definitely something I'm going to have to read up on if I uh, ever want to uh, use BlueJ again. Uh, learning C++ now so yeah not really my priority uh, let's just try opening up some programs now I have successfully overclocked this to 1 gigahertz it's been running stable for about the past 15 minutes I would say um, and it is slightly more responsive especially upon boot it boots up a little bit quicker now once again at throwing in a slightly faster SD card might help uh, but I just don't have one on hand at the moment. As you can see, everything's pretty snappy. Web browsing is still pretty slow, and trying to watch YouTube videos on this is uh, actually painful as well. I think I'll go ahead and pop open the web browser uh, and navigate to YouTube just to demo that. It will play videos back in 360p, but once you get up to 720, uh, it kind of stutters and doesn't really want to play the videos. So here's YouTube playback at 720p. As you can see, it is stuttering quite a bit. I'm going to drop the resolution down to 360 and you'll see that uh, we can get about 30 FPS at uh, uh, when you switch the settings over to 360p. There's video playback at 360p. I say we're getting probably about 30 FPS. 
that's going to be about it as far as the testing is concerned. I mean, there are a ton of videos on YouTube demoing this thing in action. So if you want to see a little bit more, you can go ahead and check one of those out. Uh, also, I really don't intend on using this as a computer per se. It's going to be more of a project tool and I really look forward to messing around with this thing for the next couple weeks to see what it can do. Overall, I am pretty happy with the purchase for 11 bucks. I mean, the case came intact, the Pi came intact, the case is pretty nice. Uh, we got an SD card with it. So, I mean, pretty satisfied. Uh, it does the job, it works. So yeah, A plus there and it's the cheapest one I could find. So that's gonna be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, you can drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can use my Amazon affiliate link. Link will be in the description. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in tomorrow's installment of a computers and technology where I will actually be unboxing this and then I have an experiment coming up. I just wanted to let you guys know because uh, I heard that some of you are getting bored uh, since I haven't really been doing any experiments lately. Don't worry, one is coming your way in the next couple days.